The final game of the seven-game homestand sees the Steelers take on a Cardiff Devil side that won here on the opening weekend of the league season. They're without Jake Kugler, Sheffield are still missing Scott Allen, Evan Mosey and Oscar Ursland. Those three aren't far away from returning though, so while the team is playing for points in the title race, individuals are playing for their spots in the lineup. Devils chop up the puck and it'll go back into the corner, they'll move it to the near side where Richardson will have a couple of moments to turn and face up the ice. And a spin away from the hit, didn't get it as far down the ball as he would have liked. Cox has made the best of it, he moves the puck inside, Martin moves it across even further and the first shot gets blocked away off Schultz's body. Devils recycle it and shoot into traffic, it's an opportunity there for Martin and it's got in! The net was knocked off but the puck had gone in and after just 39 seconds the Cardiff Devils have taken the lead. Martin did well to control it with his skate and he sweeps it in. The puck had crossed the line before the net was dislodged. The call on the ice is goal. And whilst they might look at it, I'm fairly sure that Joey Martin has got his seventh of the season here. Did well to control the puck, having initially missed it with his stick to use his skates. Brings it under control and gets the shot away quickly. And does it jam in through the goal or has he actually gone underneath? That replay from the side is a little less convincing. The officials just signalling that this is an official's review. Does this actually get inside the post? Or is the net lifted off and does the puck slide underneath it? It's not easy to see, it's Schultz, the Steelers defenceman coming behind Greenfield trying to get a block on it. The reaction from the Steelers players suggested that they thought it was a good goal. And it's only taking one review here. And I'm sure this will stand. Oh, wow, no! Goodness me! I am staggered by that. They are saying that that puck did not cross the line, that it went in. Well, I'm not sure what they're saying, because it's not clear if the call on the ice is goal. Have you seen anything that suggests that that goal shouldn't stand? Christo sends it across the crease, and the stick from Bounds sends that one up and into the crowd. Those are the dangerous ones. Look out, it missed the netting. And went into the lower block. Someone's got a souvenir. Fingers crossed. Everybody got out of the way of that one. Oh! Quite why that particular seat remained unsold, I'm not sure, but thank goodness it did. Switched across to Petgrave, he's got room to line this one up. And his shot gets deflected and it was going away from the direction that Bounds was trailing in. Defence was able to keep it away from goal, that one's going to be offside. And it's also going to be a tripping penalty. The Devils are going to go short-handed here. Petgrave couldn't keep it in the zone. But before the whistle went, he was tripped up. That's pretty clear, and it results in a trip to the penalty box for Ryan Penny, first penalty of the game. He plays it back here to Schultz, who's moving centrally. Now Christo again, this time he goes down low, but the pass just bobbles on Ciampini. Steelers top scorer, but hasn't scored in his last six games. I feel that tonight would be a great time to get back on the score sheet. But carried in by Raska. Just lost balance as he did. The Devils missed a chance to clear though. Schultz has it. No shot straight down the middle initially. He gets it back for another look. Christo again. Played across by Ciampini and smashed in! The Steelers do have their power play goal, and they have it through Brett Newman. The puck movement from side to side, and Newman settled it down and got the shot away before Bounds could get across. A five on four power play goal, and the Steelers do get to the 25% mark. 
Christo to Ciampini to Newman. Put back with Batch. Tipped in by the Devils. They'll go chasing after Pichet. It's going to accelerate away from Britain. The Steelers turn to send one in and go skating after it. Bounds will settle it down. Able to play it past Christo. Jones decides not to pinch up. Instead retreats to try and deal with the threat of Waller who skates with such good style. Steelers know all about him. They had him in the Elite Series and the Devils get themselves level. It's Duggan. He scored twice here on the opening weekend of the season. And he hasn't scored since in the Elite League until now. Feed comes out and the shot goes straight back in. 25 Elite League games in League and Cup without a goal. And he's back in the Utilitar Arena and Duggan is back on the score sheet. Tip goes behind the goal. Penny should reach it. In a tangle, that's going to be a penalty. Penny hit the ice and so did Schultz. I'm not sure which way this one's been called. Although well, judging by the reaction of Christo, it's going to be against the Steelers. Indeed it is. It'll be Kevin Schultz on his way to the box. Eight penalty minutes across his first 80 Steelers games in his first full season, plus the Elite Series with the Steelers. He's now up to 14 this season alone. And Waller, Reed. Let's keep hold of it, moving inside. Waller's got a little pocket of space. Back for Crandall. Allowed to walk it in. One timer comes across and it's smashed in. The Devils have a power play goal and they have the lead in this game. It's a long pass from face off dot to face off dot. It's a really good one timer that Greenfield just can't quite get back to. A little piece of it with that blocker. He tries to reach it, unable to stop it. So Reed's ninth goal of the season. There's Pichet. Pass taken well by Petule. Back round behind the goal, Mitchell trying to get away from Batch. Puck is there, can the Steelers play it in? They can't, it's still live in front of Bounds, now it's covered. He was there for a moment. But Mitchell, who sold the dummy on Batch, got him moving the wrong way. I think he was trying the little backhand wraparound attempt. He squeezed it on the near side, but Nally dragged it across. But he didn't lift it at all, but sometimes those little change ups sliding along the ice. The netminder expecting a shot that's going to go high. Seen him squeeze underneath netminders, netminders before. Bounds not fooled by the lack of power on the shot. Bounds. Jones towards goal. Opportunity on the follow up. Bounds is down and he's got the puck trapped underneath him. Alaska had a few jabs at it. And Bounds made the save. There was no deflection from Raska initially. And then the puck. Just get underneath that left pad for a moment, but Bounds is down with the arm. Got it trapped under the body. Raska couldn't free it. It's a really good piece of net mining by Bounds. Didn't complete his last start against the Steelers. Down at Ice Arena Wales, he was pulled after conceding four. Schultz just out of reach of Neverlinen. Cox trying to play it back door. The save is made by Greenfield. He went into the splits to keep out Martin. This was the big opportunity for Martin. Don't really have many other options. He was trying to stretch it around Greenfield. Does win the draw again. 
Pichet with a pass forward to Christo. Latal. Back for Christo. Now has taken up position between the circles. Now he goes towards Latal for down off the post and in! And look how much it means to Robert Dowd. He's fired up. The crowd are on their feet and the Steelers are level. Latal controlled it. Dowd called for it. And via the glove, the post and the back of Bounds' left leg, the Steelers have tied the game. Said it might need a little bit of fortune for the Steelers around the goal. They may have just had it. Bounds nearly saved it. The post nearly kept it out. But it has crossed the line. Jones trying to whip it across the blue line, has lost it. And now there's an opportunity for Waller, breaking through. Big moment, Greenfield denies him. First time, really, that the Steelers have been forced into a turnover and it's led to an odd man rush the other way it was the speedy Waller through on Greenfield he's in good form in one-on-ones got more work to do here though as the Steelers haven't got this away and the Devils have taken advantage it's Sanford opportunities to get the puck away were missed by the Steelers and they have paid the price. Martin to Sanford. And with 5.28 to go, that could be decisive. Sanford's 20th goal of the season in the Elite League competitions. And what a vital goal it might be. Neverlinen's pass hits Reed. Petgrave gets it to its destination in the end. Mitchell. Centres it, hit and saved. McNally denied by bounds. Christo waits if Newman can win it, and he can't. Can the Devils get the puck away? Can they keep it away from danger? They're going to try and trap it in the corner. There's not going to be time for the Steelers to get it out. The Devils win again in the Utilita Arena by three goals to two this time. The Steelers pressed, they got level, but a mistake in their own defensive zone proved costly. Steelers' man of the match is Nicholas Neverlinen. Oh, such a solid, reliable member of that Steelers' defensive core. And the defence limited the Devils to just 14 shots. It was 12 shots the last time they came. The Devils, once again, Finding a way to force the Steelers into a mistake. And when they get the Aaron, was that one that slipped away? Yeah, we deserve better tonight for sure. Um, you know, it wasn't a complete 60. I, I loved our first, I loved our third. I think we outshot them 16 to 3 in the third period, slanted the ice one direction, and then they get one counter chance and end up putting in the back of our net. And their goaltender makes some big saves in that third period that, that closed the door on us there. Um, so, yeah, you know, as a coach, you talk about 60 minutes of hockey. I uh, didn't love our second period and saying that we, we outshot them 12 to 8 in the second. That was our worst period. I think we gave up 13 shots all night tonight. Usually that's good enough to win a hockey game, but now that's, uh, that's two or three games in this building now where we've played very, very good defensively and, and haven't been clinical enough offensively, you know, to, to find a way to get the two points. And, you know, um, still believe very highly of our group. I thought we competed, battled hard tonight. Um, you know, it's just we, we got to find a way to be better offensively. Yeah, momentum was with us, wasn't it, when we got it back to 2-2? Yeah, and then, you know, a minute later, Champ has the puck on his tape in, in the hash mark there. Bouncy makes a good save. It's just little details that I think we, we still can be a little bit cleaner on. Um, but like I said, defensively, We've been very, very good, and we're not giving up a lot. It's just now we got to find a way to, you know, not take much away from that defensive side of our game and start creating a little bit more. You're the man behind all that. Is that easy to do? Um, no, it's you know, it's nothing's easy in this game. It's it's work every single night. You know, um, we'll watch the tape and see what we can come up with. It'll 
you know, it'll be nice hopefully next week to have Scott Allen and Evan Mosey back into our group. It, things are trending the right way for them. So that will be a, a, a nice addition. Um, you know, it feels like right now, since we lost Scotty, I haven't really found the perfect replacement for, for him up, up with Champini and, and Newman. And I've had to pull other guys from different lines that were going to try with them. So it's, um, you know, it'll, it'll be nice to have those bodies back. Busy period, we've talked about it before, but we go to Coventry tomorrow and then back here again on Wednesday. Yeah, I think it's I think it's fun that way. You know, there's we had a four week practice this week and I don't think we'll we'll practice probably four times in the next three weeks now with how many games we have with the Wednesday, Saturday, Sundays and up in Scotland twice and back into Cardiff and then back into Scotland. So it's a it's a busy period right now. I think as a player and as a coach, you, you love the games. That's what the, the fun bit. Um, you know, it'll be a it'll be a, a tough sledge here, but I, I like our, I like what we got going. Coach, your thoughts after that three two road win? Yeah, I think it was a good game for fans to watch. Um, you know, a lot of back and forth. Felt like their goalie um, played well, but uh, Bouncy for us. Um, you know, he he stood in there for us, and we weathered them in the third period. They came at us with a lot of heat. Um, but, you know, we scored some timely goals and, and, you know, we played a certain way that we had came in wanting to play and um, which was just simple, uh, fast hockey. We felt like we did that. The shots may not reflect that, but I felt like we took quality shots tonight and, and we cashed in on the ones that we needed to. Two visits here to the building this season and two very similar wins. Yeah, uh, when you look at the statistics, they're quite similar. Uh, I, I liked our win tonight a bit better. I felt like we played more. We had more control um, at more moments of the game. I felt like uh, we had some good ozone time and, and we just played with a little bit more pace than the first time here. Um, but like I said, I didn't feel like the shot count really reflects the way we played. I felt like we had a really solid game. We did weather a good, I would say, 12 minutes of Sheffield in the third period. They, they came at us and you know, ultimately um, you know, they, they tied the game um, and, and we ended up pushing back and getting that big goal. So um, again, it was, it was nice to see us cash in on our opportunities, but Bounds played great, gave us a chance to win. But I liked, I liked the way we played in our, in, within our structure, right? How important to the win was the forechecking of your team? A lot of icing calls against the Steelers tonight, which is a reflection of how hard those forwards worked. Yeah, we, I mean, went over uh, obviously the, the forecheck. We, we had a certain plan to attack Sheffield. Um, in a certain way, uh, and, and it was one of it was part of it was just speaking in generalities, not giving too much away. It was a lot of pressure, um, so we felt like we can we can sort of get in on the on the forecheck and expose them and manage the lines and, and just play again that fast game to put the pace up and keep the tempo high, uh, which involves putting pressure on their D, getting them to go back 200 feet to get the puck every time, and um, you know what we felt like we were successful in that area. You've got to come back to this building again in a few days. What do you expect from that game? Same thing. It's fun. Sheffield's fun to play against. Uh, I think that goes both ways. There's a there's a big rivalry here, um, a derby, if you want to call it. Uh, both teams don't like each other. It's clear. And and but you know what? From a fan's perspective, it's it's fun. Uh, you know, and, and it's it's always a good game to go back and watch back on film because. Uh, they're just, they're just fun games to watch. Um, but from a coach's perspective, it's going to be intense. It's going to be quite clinical. It's going to be a little bit of back and forth. And we're going to need everyone to play their A game if we expect to get another win.